All right, guys, this is my first ever tutorial or whatever you want to call it. I'm going to edit a picture and you get to watch. So I'm going to pull from a shoot that I did with uh, a fashion designer. And she made a dress for this shoot. Her name is Yvonne Finn. So Finn Design. Uh, now I just got to pick a picture. Which one? I don't know. Eh, that one's okay. Let's see further down the line here, I think. There's a lot of silence, so I'm going to talk about tomorrow's Thanksgiving. Yeah, tomorrow is Thanksgiving. What do you guys think about that? What are you going to do for Thanksgiving? That's a good shot. Let's use that one for the sake of time and convenience because it looks pretty cool. So, command down is going to open it up in Photoshop. Using Adobe Photoshop CC14. This is Adobe Camera Raw. That's what it looks like with auto. We're never going to use auto, so if you guys are ever going to watch my channel and think that this is an auto channel, you're wrong. Go to another page. Just kidding. Don't actually go to another page because I love you. Just doing a couple minor adjustments here till I get the right look that I want for this. Uh, I tend to like my stuff a little bit more on the green side, but not too green just yet because I don't want to affect the skin tones of her. So I don't really want my model looking like an alien. Uh, a lot of people don't like using the clarity thing. I just out of habit will go about plus three. And saturation I usually pull down to like minus seven ish just because I can always add it in later. I don't want it to start off over enhanced. White balance looks good. Uh shot it at six thousand, so should be fine. Uh pull back on those whites a little bit just for the sake of uh my S curve later. Blacks are good. So this overall just looks fair for now. Uh, let's do a little tonal curve here. Uh, this is just a beginning S curve. And I actually don't like that, so we're not going to do an S curve right now. We're going to go ahead and do that later in post. Now we're going to do some split toning. Uh, for my highlights, the skin, uh, I want to add some orange in there. And the background for the shadows, I'm going to add some green. I don't know why, guys, but I really like green. Green and red, both really cool colors. I'm going to enable the lens profile here just to kind of get rid of some of the distortion, even though I don't really have a whole lot since I was using 46 millimeter. Uh, but we'll get a little, a little bit more. Get rid of some of the vignetting. And now let's go ahead and open the image. All right, so first thing first is we're going to Command-J. Command-J is duplicating the background layer. You never want to work on the background layer because that is considered a destructive workflow. Uh, I won't get into all that right now, but destructive workflows are bad. Don't do it. So we've already duplicated our background layer. Next thing we're going to do is uh, we're going to first dive in here, start working on the skin, just getting rid of some blemishes and whatever. So we're going to hit the J tool. That's our spot healing brush. Uh, right off the bat here, the first thing I want to kind of get rid of is this dumb little blotch on the background. Kind of clean that up a little bit. Uh, this is a mole. This here is a pimple. I'm not going to get rid of her moles, just the pimples. Little imperfections. There's really not a whole lot to take care of on this girl because this model is just awesome and beautiful. Shout out to Charlotte Mayer. You guys should all go follow her on Instagram. Uh, her Instagram account is... Wait for it. I'm looking it up. I have the iPhone 6 Plus now, guys. It's pretty awesome. If you don't have an iPhone... 
You suck. Oh, how about that? So if you look at Instagram, Charlotte M. Mayer, C-H-A-R-L-O-T-T-E-M-M-A-Y-E-R. Give her a follow because she is a very awesome model. Back to editing here. I have ADD, guys, if you couldn't tell. Just going to get rid of these very quickly. Knuckles are fine. There's like some leftover paint, it looks like, maybe. I don't know, whatever that is. Paint, blood. Maybe she killed someone right before the shoot. It's quite possible. You never know in this, this neck of the woods. Riverside's crazy, guys. Just kidding. It's kind of awesome here. All right, so now that we've already taken care of the immediate imperfections like pimples and a couple random wrinkles here and there, uh, we're going to duplicate this layer again. And now I'm going to hit the S key for my clone stamp. Now, clone stamp, whenever I'm working on skin, I will only work about 12%. Uh, anything under 12, I'll, I'll use that for my skin. And... I want to make sure that this is not a very hard brush and also not a very big brush. Whenever you're using the clone stamp tool, you have to hold option to choose your source from where you want to clone from. And then wherever you click that, that's where your source will be. So under her neck, I want to kind of soften this shadow just a tad. So I'm going to use this area here as my source. So option click, now that's my source. So anything over here now that I paint is going to be replicated. And in this case, since it's such a low opacity, it's just gonna kind of lighten up that shadow area a bit. And that looks perfect to me. So before, after, don't wanna do it over the top here. Same thing up here on her face. I'm going to option click and I'm only doing this to soften up the skin a bit. I'm not uh, not trying to get rid of anything, just soften it. Just make that light look a little bit dimmer. The skin already looks much softer. Just kind of go under those eyes there a little bit. And when you see this brush size changing, I'm just using the brackets on the keyboard to make it bigger or smaller. The right bracket will obviously make it bigger, left bracket smaller. I'll be doing that throughout this with several tools. Okay, so the face looks pretty good to me, guys. Uh, that's as far as I'm really going to go with this, as far as the skin goes. Nothing else needs to be touched. Her skin everywhere else is pretty flawless. Uh, just a quick before and after of what we've done so far. Right away you can see a major difference on her face and neck. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a blank layer. I'm going to hit G to use my paint bucket tool or if you haven't changed it it's going to default on your gradient tool. So if you click and hold and go to paint bucket tool then we're going to go to our color palette here and I use uh, a middle gray because it's a neutral color so the number I use if it's helpful for all you guys is 80 80 80. If I can get it there. There we go. So 80, 80, 80. Hit OK. Now we're just going to click. 
it's going to fill the entire page with a neutral gray. Then we're going to go over here to uh, our overlay options and we're going to switch this to overlay. Now this is doing nothing as you can see here. But when we hit O, O is our dodge and burn tool. So right now I have it on dodge because I'm going to dodge out her right leg down here. Now because this is a neutral layer here, this is also non-destructive. This is what I was talking about earlier. So I can just simply turn this on or off later or I can turn down the opacity. So let's zoom in here on this leg and I'm going to make a selection no just kidding now I'm gonna make a selection on her leg so that way I don't affect anything else other than her leg don't want to brighten the shadows in there really just the leg and if we go to refine edge we're gonna see exactly what I'm gonna get so I'm gonna do smart radius maybe three pixels smooth that out and feather it a bit and shift that edge out hit OK and that will apply that now if we hit O we automatically get to use that dodge tool make sure that layer is selected we're just gonna lighten this up a bit to make it look a little bit more realistic Let's see how that looks there uh, not bad not bad should do a little bit more. Much better, much better. So before, after, before, after. Looks pretty good, right? Now, one more thing I want to take care of is on this dress, there's some lines in there from creases, from storage. We kind of had to drive this a little further than we anticipated to. So I'm just going to quickly get rid of these lines make it look how it should look and if you're interested at all on what I used to capture this image it was a Canon 5D Mark III with the 24 to 70 lens I think I was shooting at like 46 millimeters or something like that and maybe 5.6 or 6.3 somewhere around there was my f-stop and then as far as lighting goes, I had the uh, Braun Color Senso Pack. I believe it's 1200 watts, somewhere around there. And then I had uh, two of the Senso heads. I believe one was at full power. The other was, ah, no, probably not at full power. It's probably asymmetrical. Maybe had them at half power or quarter power, somewhere around there. And then if you look at it, my main light source is coming from top right and then left over here I'm kinda shooting through a scrim so that way I've got a little fill light over here and then I have another light to the right here and that was also a fill I had fun with this one great model great set design really liked it shout out to Sarah Oliphant Oliphant Studios you guys make amazing backdrops I think you should give me one. I'll do a full review just for you guys. This hair is a little finicky. It's kind of bugging me. So I'm going to get rid of it. My lady's little brother is here with me just watching me do this, by the way. So leave comments below and make sure that you uh, tell him you love him so that way he's not sitting here for no reason being bored, even though he probably already is. Just kidding. Are you bored, Matthew? No answer. Hmm? Yeah, he's bored, guys. He didn't even answer me. He fell asleep. He fell asleep. All right, so that hair is gone. And the little excess parts of the dress are fixed. Now, next thing I want to do here is, you see how this red and this red aren't the same? 
that is a mistake because we got the wrong material. So, or not the wrong material, but I guess just the wrong color material. So I'm going to make a selection just of the part that I want to change the color to. Make sure not to get any of her hand in there. So that looks pretty good like we did before. I'm going to refine edge. Smooth those edges a bit. And shift edge. And click OK and that will apply it. Now I'm going to use a curve layer. The curve layer now is only affecting this portion of the dress that I've selected. I'm going to go down to green. The opposite of green is red. So if I pull down on green, it's going to make it much darker. Now we're going to go to the red and pull that up. So right away, that's pretty close. It's a little off hue. Let's see if I can just pull down on that contrast and make it match. That looks good to me. So I'm going to dig it. That's what we're doing. We're digging here. So that's pretty good. Now, next thing I want to do is I want to change the background a bit. I just want to kind of color that out a little bit more. So I'm going to make a selection again, this time using the entire model as a selection. Just kind of go around here. Tracing out her body. She got that whole Phantom of the Opera type deal going on in her face. No, we don't want that selected. And don't want that selected. So that looks fairly decent right there. We're going to do the same thing here and refine edge. And we're going to change the radius to make it look a little bit better there. Smooth it out a bit. Maybe do a little feather. Shift the edge just right. And that looks pretty good. And I just don't like how smooth it is, so I'm going to take care of that. Hit OK to apply it. And since I want to be working on the background, I'm going to right click, select inverse. Now I'm working only on the background, not on my model. So curves layer again, you guessed it. And since I really like green, I'm going to make the background a little bit more, more green. That's pretty close to how I want it. I'm going to add a little bit more blue hue to it. And pull down on those reds, get it nice and green. Eh, too blue actually. I'm not I'm not liking that, so let's add a little bit more green to it. That's better. Now let's go to RGB, add some contrast in. Get a little bit brighter there. looks pretty good. I'm going to use the same selection and just brighten the background a bit here. Perfect. All right, I think that wraps it up. Now let's look at a before, after, before, after. Actually, you know what? I just caught something. Let's look at her eyes here. Let's give those a little bit more oomph. Let's hit O on our on our uh, dodge and burn layer. 
Let's go in and dodge those eyes just a bit to make them pop. Nothing over dramatic. We want it to still look real, and I really don't want her to look like a vampire because that was not the goal of this shoot. There we go. Much better. All right, guys, before and after. And that wraps it up. If you guys want more of these, please subscribe to the channel below here and share some comments. Like the page, send your friends my way, email me, text me. Just kidding, don't text me. And leave some love for Matthew. All right, guys, this is Robert Meeks. Later. How do I, how do I stop?